Hey yeah, everyone in the Webflow community and welcome back to another Flow Ninjas Webflow video. In this one, we're going to be going over the final step of the checklist and going over uh, symbols, naming conventions, logo, project settings, tracking, and then just the final check uh, before we can go send our website to QA. If you have a QA team in your, in your agency or kind of at your plate, or just go live with the website. Kinda, if you're a freelancer, this is probably going to be just enough for you to go ahead and launch the website. So let's jump straight into it. The first thing we're going to be going over are symbols. So uh, when doing the kind of the website, kind of we like going back when everything is developed and seeing what is used as a symbol and what is not, what shouldn't be used as a symbol. So in our case, we're using the template sections. We have uh, testimonials. We have the expert badge. We have the tutorials. Uh, I mean, of course, the navigation and the footer as symbols. So you want to go back on the website, just refer what is kind of repeating. Maybe what can you standardize to make it repeating? So your clients actually have a single source of truth for those symbols and they can build new pages with those symbols later on without your help actually, and thus saving you a lot of time and headache on that front. And then we like creating a new page in full starter. So like you can create a new draft page and just dump all of those symbols just because we found that the clients actually like seeing the symbols live and how they look like instead of just seeing the kind of in the, in the navigation panel, kind of how do they look like. Then in general, uh, kind of we like just double checking our naming conventions. Like we have our way of naming classes in Webflow and the process for that, which you can find on our website on the Webflow guides. But there are many different ways of, of naming classes in Webflow. So just make sure that any sort of uh, kind of naming convention you're using is that you've sticked to the naming convention until the end. So that for anybody else jumping into the website, if you need to switch the website to your teammate, they actually understand what's happening and that it's pretty easy to scale the website later on if you do decide to create, let's say, 2000 plus pages uh, kind of for the site itself. So following that, our classes on like that Flow Ninja's team is building are named in title case. We name the page names in title case, and then we name also interactions uh, the way we name classes. So for example, if you're having a home, uh, um, an interaction for the homepage, first off being specific for the page it, it's on, so that is homepage. Then the section it's on is hero, and then what it's doing is loading the page. Or testimonials cards cover in, testimonials cards cover out, etc., etc. Reading the, the flow starter here can help you understand it a little bit better. Uh, then this is a section just for our little kind of this is a section just for our QA team. They require this to be added. So just making sure that your logo links to the homepage in the navigation and the footer. The logo has the alt text set. And then the, finally, that the logo has the size of the logo properly set. So um, that you have the size of the logo kind of set as a fixed state. And then of course, that the logo is not blurry and then ideally an SVG format. Um, then uh, in terms of the project settings, so you want to go ahead and do some small things like fav icon and web clip. Uh, you want to make sure to upload custom ones here. Uh, language code, add the language code that the website is based off. Um, then removing the Webflow branding. We don't want to go live with the Webflow badge on the bottom right. It's not going to look as professional. So yeah, just this, uh, remove this made in Webflow and remove Webflow branding in HTML. Set the time zone. So this can be a really small uh, and kind of fun feature you can add. Is like, for example, if your clients are launching blog posts or whatever, but you still have the time zone, let's say in Belgrade and they're in US, they're not going to be happy that their blog post went, uh, let's say, eight hours earlier than needed. So just make sure that you kind of just know where your clients is at and then just set a time zone to be their time zone. For advanced publishing options, you just want to go ahead here and just check everything on. So SSL, HTML, CSS, and JS. For secure, secure frame headers, if you have your website embedded somewhere in the iframe where you want it to be embedded as an iframe, you can leave this off. But if you don't want your website to be embeddable in every single, in any sort of a way, uh, you can turn this feature on. And then in terms of the custom plan branding, you can go to editor. And for our clients, we like adding the branding icon here. So like so adding uh, kind of Upwork, adding Smart Suit or whatever kind of Clara, adding their branding, which is going to make their marketing team feel at home when they go ahead into the editor mode and start editing the website itself. In terms of tracking, uh, we always add a GTM to the website and then instruct the clients to add any sort of tracking they want to add to the website to the GTM. So the best practice is to ask your clients to invite you to their GTM container so you can see what they're adding and maybe say, okay, that, that's, that's a lot of scripts. You can push back a little bit or add some custom um, ways of actually loading the scripts after the page loads or just kind of adjusting that when you're doing the speed optimizations. 
and then also uh, you're gonna be able to pretty easily uh, copy the code for the GTM and then paste it in Webflow. And then the final check is hopefully doing every, not technically everything one more time, but checking the website on Google Chrome, on Safari, and then on Firefox to make sure that kind of on all of those browsers you have some strange bugs occurring. And based off of this, you can send this to QA or just go live with the website and you're gonna be rest assured that kind of 99% of cases of bugs that you could have uh, caused with Webflow, you're removed and you're pretty good to go live with your website. So you can either clear the cache, so clear everything out, you have a new checklist to go to, um, you can just kind of go ahead and launch a new website. And then finally, ideally go ahead and drag the checklist in your bookmark so you can refer to the, this checklist every single time when you're uh, kind of building a new website. So. Looking forward to creating many more resources in the future and stay tuned. Bye-bye.